everybody use the mic? Mind. Mind. Okay, great. Good morning, everyone. It's so good to be here this morning. What an awesome, awesome crowd. And Rick, thank you for your your leadership here. Um, I really, first of all, want to say thank you to so many of you in this room. The one thing I know about campaigns, whether you win or you lose, you meet so many people. And people with whom your paths would never, ever cross. And Steve and I have made so many friends just because of the campaign. And we thank you for that. Uh, your friendships really, really have enriched our lives over the years, and we're very, very grateful for it. I'm running for the United States Senate. Ladies and gentlemen, results matter. They matter. And let's look at where we are in this country. We've gone in the past 20 years from a $4 trillion debt to $17 trillion. Add to that the $80 million plus in unfunded commitments that we've made in this country, and we're bumping up to about $100 trillion. We have, we're overtaxed, we're overregulated, we know what we have in the Obama health care tax. We have some serious issues in this, in this country and we really have to elect people who understand that results are going to matter. It's not enough to just vote no. It's not enough to put your name on the bill to co-sponsor it. Every one of you has jobs, right? Right? Does the boss say, hey, no worries, you get a promotion even though you tried? That's not how it works. And just as we have to have results in the business world, shouldn't we expect results from our elected officials as well? Yes. yes. Exactly. And I have a proven track record of actually putting conservative principles into action. Um, in the business world, I've worked for KPMG and for Supervision Corporation. I ran one of the largest chambers of commerce in the state. When I took over as CEO, it was just a few months into the job when I discovered the finance director had been embezzling money for seven years before I got there, and the organization was literally on the brink of bankruptcy. I was able to put together a turnaround plan, went, put my personal reputation on the line to secure a uh, line of credit from the bank. It took two years, two years, but we turned that organization around and repaid every dime we had to borrow so that today, that chamber is doing all the good things that chambers do, um, helping small businesses, creating jobs in North Fulton. When I came in as chairman of the Fulton County Board of Commissioners, and most of you know, that is um, a very divisive commission um, controlled by Democrats. I came into a $100 million budget deficit. The Democrats had a budget on the table with a three mil property tax increase. I had to make a decision in those early days when I was elected. I had to decide if I was going to work really hard to deliver good results for the people of Fulton County, or was I going to just play politics and political gamesmanship? I could have voted no on that first budget with a three mil tax increase and held a press conference and had lots of pithy rhetorical statements that probably would have played very well in the press. But what would the results have been? A bad one for the people of Fulton County. So I went to work. We cut the budget. We found spending and prior prioritized our programs and were able to fill that $100 million gap with cuts. We passed the budget without a tax increase. When I finished my tenure as chairman, we had the first balanced budget, true balanced budget, that Fulton County had had in decades. And I did all of that without the benefit of a Republican majority. When you gave me the extraordinary privilege of being the first elected Republican Secretary of State, I came in and I had to make sure that business licenses were processed effectively and timely so that people could have their license to practice their profession. I had to make sure that corporate filings were done efficiently and timely. I had to get photo ID implemented. I took on the Obama <coughs> Justice Department to make sure that uh, we verified citizenship so that only U.S. citizens were going to vote in our elections. And I did all of that while also cutting the budget by 20%. In the United States Senate, that's the kind of leadership that we need. Individuals who know how to solve problems, who know how to put their conservative principles into action. We know we need to repeal, and I don't even like to call it Obamacare because that sounds a little too warm and fuzzy to me. Let's call it what it is. It's the Obama health care tax and mandate. It's $800 billion in new taxes. We need to repeal it. But as Republicans, as conservatives, we need to have a replacement for it, too. And I support Congressman Tom Price's H.R. 2300. It has portability of insurance plans. It has high risk pools. And importantly, it has additional tort reform so that we can start to address the real problem of defensive medicine, which is driving up the cost of health care exponentially. Secondly, we need to fix our fiscal house. 
We need to have a strong military and fund our military adequately. But how do we do that if we're a bankrupt country? And we're seeing in this world right now that the risks are real, the threats are real. We need to adequately fund our military. And to do that, we've got to fix the fiscal house, deal with the spending, and deal with the debt. Now, I know that cutting spending is hard, but it is not rocket science, folks. The plans are out there. The proposals are out there. It simply takes the resolve and the will to do it and an individual who will be willing to stand up and face people about the real cuts we need to make. The General Accounting Office, they put out a report every single year with a laundry list of programs that they are recommending that the Congress cut. Now think about this. This is a federal agency, a federal bureaucrat, making a recommendation to cut federal spending, and still, still Congress could not find the will or the guts or the resolve to actually do it. There is hundreds, hundreds of billions of dollars of duplicative programs um, across federal agencies, from the federal down to the state. We need to move to a two-year budget cycle. We need to have zero-based budgeting roll every single federal agency through that intensive pro process once a decade. And then we'll be able to put some parameters around the size of the federal government. And when we have a piece of legislation for spending or um, other proposals, it generally comes with a, a fiscal note, if you will, telling us how much it costs. Let's also have a constitutional note so that we can determine if what's happening in Congress actually aligns with what, with what it is mandated to do within, our, within the Constitution. Then on taxes. We haven't had tax reform in almost 30 years. 30 years the highest corporate tax rate of any industrialized nation in the world, and we're overregulated. Is it any wonder that we've not been able to recover out of this great recession? Is it any wonder that our businesses are at a competitive disadvantage? I support scrapping the IRS, repealing the 16th Amendment, and moving forward with the fair tax as quickly as possible. country that put a man on the moon, folks. That's hard. That's hard. Getting the fair tax, it'll take great resolve. It'll take a lot of hard work, but I believe that we can do it. Also on the regulatory front, you know, we spend, companies spend $1.8 trillion on regulatory compliance. $1.8 trillion. We are so overregulated in the duplication of regulations across federal agencies and also from the federal government down to the state is so onerous that it is truly crushing job creation and innovation and expansion in this country. We need to do an across-the-board audit of the regulatory climate and put in place a 10-year sunset rule on regulations, on major regulations, so that Congress is forced to take a specific action to renew a regulation so it doesn't sit on the books for 10, 20, 30 years without ever taking the time to really understand what the impact is, the real impact on businesses in this, in this country. It's a crowded field for United States Senate, no question about it. Uh, my opponents in this race have spent a combined 42 years in Washington. That is a lot of Washington, y'all. And I think that we need new leadership up there. These individuals are all great fellows, great fellows. But they have had 10 to 20 years to do every single thing that they are talking about now. Results matter. And look at where we are. We can blame the other side. We can say it's all because of the Democrats. But the hard truth, the unfortunate truth, is that accommodating Republicans have brought us to this place. And we need to have strong new leadership in Washington so that we can move forward. And oh, by the way, we need term limits so that we can cut out this nonsense of career politicians. I know it's sometimes easy to get extremely frustrated about where we are in the country. I feel it and hear it from Georgians all across the state. But I hope that you share my great optimism for this country and our future. Because the truth is, every single one of us, we stand on the shoulders of great Americans who sacrificed literally everything so that we could live in a country of great freedoms and great opportunities. I know that only in America could I be standing before you this morning. I never could have imagined the path that my life could take, the plans that God would have for me. When I left home at 17 to move away from a troubled home environment, I just could not have anticipated 
what the future would hold. And I know, I know, that a great God and an extraordinary nation afforded a young girl tremendous opportunities to be whatever it is she wanted to be when she grew up. Ronald Reagan was the first president that I was able to vote for in 1980, and shortly after he came into office, he told a country that then, like today, was very uncertain about the future, afraid, angry about where we were. He told us that our country's best days were ahead. And when he said those words, he spoke to a young girl who was out on her own far sooner than she ever imagined, ever imagined. He spoke right to me, and I knew that if a country's best days were ahead, then a young girl's best days could be ahead, too, if I worked really hard and held myself accountable. I'm running for United States Senate so that we can make sure that America's best days are still ahead. I ask for your vote, but know that I'm going to work very, very hard to earn it. And then together, together we will have the guts and the resolve to do what we have to do to leave our legacy of great freedoms and great opportunities for the generations to come. Thank you, and God bless everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Rick says I can take questions for a few minutes. Yes, in the back. Actually, I have two questions. And I'll have to defer to my moderator. I'll repeat the question, too, for sure. people. Okay. First of all, is if the Attorney General Holder could force the state of Georgia to honor these so-called uh, homosexual, whatever they are, I refuse to use the term gay marriage, because these are not. If he could force the state of Georgia to honor them, why can't he force cities like uh, Washington, D.C., New York, Chicago, and all these other places to honor Georgia concealed weapons permits. And we want to exercise our constitutional rights. <laughs> and secondly, why can't we impeach federal judges who use the power of their office to force American citizens to violate their religious beliefs and engage in um, involuntary servitude, which is prohibited by the 13th Amendment? I'm referring to a couple of cases up yeah. west yeah. where uh, one couple was forced to Right, uh, uh, yes. The question is just about the role of judges and, and uh, the Obama Justice Department. Fortunately for Georgia, we have a very strong attorney general in Sam Olins who is there to fight hard for us. Freedom of Religion Bill pending in, I believe it's, I'm not sure if it's still in the uh, State House, one of our legislators can maybe help me out, or if it uh, came out of the State Senate. But if you care about this issue as passionately as I do, because folks, keep this in mind. I was at a, a lecture, and um, the priest in the lecture said the following, and it was about the Obama health care tax. He said that religious freedom is not a byproduct of liberty. Religious freedom is a prerequisite of liberty. That's how important this issue is. So let your legislators know there is a solid piece of legislation that is pending. Let them know how you feel about this issue so that we can get that bill out and passed. Anything else? Yes. I really appreciate what you had to say about the 16th Amendment. But I'm also extremely concerned about immigration, and I haven't heard any discussion about immigration. I figured I'd get asked about it. Yeah, well, we've got about from pre-K to fifth grade in this county, we have 25% of our students are Hispanic. We have woodering laws that are not enforced against Hispanics. Uh, so what I would like to know is, what is your position on that, and would you support uh, Senator Cruz in his efforts against Terry Reid? couple of questions in there. On immigration reform, first and foremost, no amnesty enforce our immigration laws. And as America, we do not have to apologize for wanting people to follow our rules and our laws in this country. When we also need to do a couple of things, though. We know we need to do more on the geographic border between United States and Mexico. But that's only one piece of the illegal immigration issue, one piece. 45% of illegals in this country come here on a, on a visa and then skip out on the visa. That process is fundamentally broken. Um, there is already a law in place requiring the implementation and use of an entry-exit tracking 
mechanism. It's just flat out not been done. And we need to insist that that be done because we don't ever solve the illegal immigration problem if we don't fix both sides of how individuals are coming in this country. Um, additionally, we need to have a strong emphasis on those STEM programs, science, technology, engineering, and math, so that we can start to draw down our reliance on foreign workers in that space. That's good for America, it's good for American workers as we build up that area of expertise and then that lets us rely less heavily. As far as Ted Cruz um, and um, Harry Reid, you know, the issue in Washington right now is that we need to have new leadership. And when I say new leadership, I mean new leadership from the top in the Senate and the House all the way through. is about how do we actually go through the process of cutting the budget. You know, first of all, as you go to zero-based budgeting, we're going to be able to prioritize our programs. Um, and so that we stop this history of funding programs for 10, 30 years, um, year after year, simply because they've always been funded. Um, number two, number two, it gives us a chance to align priorities within these agencies based on the here and the now. Connie Mack has long had an initiative to say, let's cut 1%, a real 1% cut every year for five or six years, and that moves us to a balanced budget. Folks, 1%, how many of you at your offices, in your businesses at home, have had to cut your spending by 1% or, in, for many of us, more? Exactly. If we can do it, we ought to expect the hard work from our elected officials to do that as well. Um, it is, the spending is out of control. Uh, let's just take, um, oh, two of the people running, uh, Congressman Kingston and Congressman Gingry, they voted for $20 million to build the Ted Kennedy Center. Why? Why? We spend $20 million in economic development in Morocco. I got nothing against Morocco, I just don't really want to pay for their economic development with our tax dollars. And so it's an intensive effort. Um, and what I find really interesting is that the era of austerity seems to have been lifted for all of the various agencies at the federal level except for the military. And they are continuing in DOD to take an, an um, uh, excess cut compared to others. We have seen, as I said on the upfront, why it is so important to be sure that we are adequately funding our military. That's not to say that they don't have to do things smarter, better, more effective, but we ought not to be uh, whittling away at our military, sort of a death by a thousand cuts, in a way that is going to undermine the security and protection of this country, our people's freedoms, and our, our people's safety, and our individual freedoms. So, yeah. What, what is your thoughts on Eliminating lobbyists. Well, that's why we need the fair tax. The question is eliminating lobbyists. I don't, you know, everyone has a right to free speech and come of it, all those things. But the way you get away from having this sort of trade off for your votes and all of that is to number one, get rid of all of the unlevel playing field with all the various deductions, etc. That's why you have the fair tax. And number two, have term limits. So that it is a finite time period in which people spend their time in Washington. I'm going to serve two terms, 12 years. That's going to give me a great opportunity to go there and be a champion for you and not a champion for K Street. I wanted to ask you, um, I experienced this uh, type of um, political um, movement in Washington in 2013. And I'm from Angola, West Africa, and I was in a refugee camp for two years after communism took over. But I wanted to ask you, how do you feel about right to life? The life? I'm sorry. Right to life, like euthanasia, like... I am pro-life. I believe that life begins at conception. I am proud to be the only candidate in this race to have received the endorsement of Susan B. Anthony Pro-Life pro List. Um, they are one of the largest pro-life organizations in the country. And, um, and I'm sorry, and that's um, how do you feel about euthanasia? 
that is so absurd. Absolutely not. If you're pro-life, you don't believe in euthanasia. Well, there's so many pro-life candidates that, you know, forget about the other. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, I need everyone's help. Okay. Uh, you, you ran for <laughs> governor once before, and I, I'm still undecided on who I want to support for Senate. Why should I vote for you over there? I have not seen any candidate come here as Senate candidate that is not a good Republican. So what sets you apart from our current list of candidates, and what do you think about our Democratic possible opponent? Do you think you'd be more competitive against her? Uh, so what are your thoughts? The difference in this race is the fact that I have a proven track record of actually getting the job done, of putting conservative principles into action in my elected time in very difficult, difficult situations. Um, two of the three congressmen in this race, Kingston and Gingry, they voted multiple times to raise the debt ceiling. Multiple times. And even though these are nice people, folks, results matter. Do you like where we are in this country? Are you happy with the way Washington is functioning? Well, the surest way to keep getting more of the same is to keep electing the same people. What difference will it make if a person is on this side of the U.S. Capitol and they go to this side of the U.S. Capitol? Absolutely nothing, except maybe the size of their office. But nothing will change. If we really want to put this country on a new trajectory, we need new leadership and individuals who will have the guts and the will to actually go there and get the job done and not be concerned about spending the rest of their life in Washington. Second is about uh, Michelle Nunn is going to be the Democratic candidate in the fall. National Journal and several other uh, uh, papers and journalists have looked at this race. They have concluded that the conservative woman is the best matchup for the GOP against Michelle Nunn. I will tell you, Harry Reid thinks he has an opportunity in Georgia. He does. And they are going to roll out the war on women. It's going to be a little tough to <coughs> drop that on me, I think. Uh, <laughs> we've got to put our best foot forward. She is going to be formidable, and that's why we have to have the strongest candidate, a candidate who has experience running statewide, a candidate who has the poise and the discipline to be on in a tough environment under the heat and fire that is going to come at the candidate, a candidate who has been truly vetted truly vetted because this is going to be a tough race. If we really want to change the course of America, we have to have a majority in the United States Senate and that starts with holding holding this seat and I will tell you this, we cannot we cannot allow Harry Reid to come to Georgia and think that he's going to get this Senate seat, seat from us. We have to send a strong message and tell him we will have none of that, y'all. Thank you.